May I speak in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. What are you looking for? These are the first words spoken by Jesus in the Gospel of John. Of the four Gospels that we have, John is almost always the odd one out. It's always the one that has slightly different take on the story or includes things not found in other Gospels. And as might be no surprise, with the case as far as what Jesus' first words are, John takes a very different tact. In the other Gospels, when Jesus finally speaks, he speaks words that are affirmative statements about who he is and about what his mission is. So in the Gospel of Matthew, which we heard last week, Jesus' first words are, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. In Mark, Jesus, when he first speaks, gets right to the point, right? As Mark doesn't ever take too much time to get to the matter. And so Jesus gets straight to the point and says, The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Luke has Jesus talking as a young boy in the temple after he's wandered off from his parents and they finally find him. And so the first thing we hear Jesus say in the Gospel of Luke is, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? These opening statements in these other Gospels that we call the Synoptic Gospels focus Jesus' mission on righteousness. They focus Jesus' work on repentance in the kingdom of God. And they identify clearly that Jesus is the Son of God. But in the Gospel of John, the first time we hear Jesus speak, he begins with a question. What are you looking for? See, in the Gospel of John, we already know very well who Jesus is. If you think to those opening verses of chapter 1 of the Gospel of John that we normally call the prologue that talks about in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. By the time we get to this moment where the Gospel writer has told us that Jesus is the Word of God made flesh, the light coming into the world. He, Jesus, is the one that John has been waiting for. So when John sees the Spirit as a dove rest and remain on Jesus, the only thing left for John to do is to testify to what he has seen and that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, that the Messiah has come. Now, our reading this morning gives us sort of three days squished together, right? We pick up after Jesus' baptism and John is testifying to what he has seen. And then it says, the next day, when John was standing with two of his disciples, these are disciples of John the Baptist, they see Jesus walk by and John looks at his disciples and testifies again and says, look, here is the Lamb of God. Then at this point, John's disciples immediately start to follow after Jesus. We don't know how or why these two disciples found their way to John the Baptist, but it seems that like John, they have been waiting for the Messiah, for Jesus, the Word made flesh, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. What are you looking for? Jesus asked. The two disciples don't offer a list, right? They don't take out their notebook and start telling Jesus all the things that they have been looking for in their life. Instead, they ask their own question. They say, Jesus, teacher, rabbi, where are you staying? From their response, we can guess that in this moment, experiencing the word made flesh, they realize that what they were looking for was to be in the presence of God. Now, Jesus, of course, doesn't give them an address. He doesn't say, you know, meet me two blocks over here at this house. Instead, he says, come and see. 
And the gospel writer tells us that John's disciples, now Jesus' disciples, do come and see. They follow Jesus and they stay with Jesus all day long until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And then finally, after having experienced the presence of God in Jesus, Andrew goes to get his brother Simon and says, I have found the Messiah. Come and see is Jesus' invitation to discipleship. If we were to keep reading a little further in this passage from John, right, we would hear Jesus use these words and that these words would then be adopted by his disciples, by his disciple Philip, when he goes to tell Nathanael that he has experienced and been in the presence of God and the presence of the Messiah. And Nathanael says, what good could come out of Nazareth? Who is this that you are talking about? And Philip's reply is, come and see. And so Nathanael does just that. And he meets Jesus. And he becomes a disciple. In chapter 4, We encounter Jesus at a well, and he meets a Samaritan woman there. And after they have this long conversation, the Samaritan woman goes back to her hometown and tells the people there, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. And through her testimony and this invitation of come and see, John tells us that many Samaritans go out and they meet Jesus and they remain there with him and they begin to believe that he is the Messiah. We know that the disciples in the Gospel of John are seeking and waiting for the Messiah. Some of them have been seeking specifically forgiveness and healing or special knowledge of God. Some may have come seeking a Messiah that was going to upset the status quo that would overturn the Roman emperor. Some may have come to follow John seeking and waiting for a king or a warrior that was going to fix everything. But what they found was the word made flesh, the Lamb of God. And for those that accepted the invitation to come and see, they would witness signs and wonders, miracles of abundance and healing, and even resurrection. And we see throughout the gospel that the response to coming and seeing and dwelling with Jesus is to then go out and tell somebody about it. These early chapters of John set a pattern of, dare we say, evangelism that perhaps we overlook or avoid. In the Episcopal Church especially, but I'm sure in a lot of other churches, with some regularity, there is some new program of evangelism or discipleship that is developed and rolled out, and we're encouraged to to dive in deep and learn how to become better evangelists and better disciples. And many of these programs are fantastic. They're wonderful, right? They challenge us to connect our stories of faith with the stories of faith that we have in Scripture. They invite us to dive deep and learn more about our faith but they also sometimes give us an easy out for the work that we're called to do right if we're not the best storyteller in the world then surely somebody else is going to handle that sort of evangelism business right or if we're not the best student in the world surely somebody else or the clergy person is going to tell us what we need to know and to learn but our reading this morning points us back to the basics. Evangelism starts with this. What are you looking for? What are your hopes? What are your disappointments? What are your hurts? Did you come here looking for forgiveness, for healing, for a fresh start? Are you wanting to be in the right social circle? Do you need friends? Are you seeking community? Are you looking for a way that you can serve the community around you? The first step in meeting Jesus and then becoming an evangelist is being honest about what brought us here in the first place. What are we looking for? 
Then we're invited to offer those expectations to God, to say them out loud, to be bold enough to answer the question, and then to be bold enough to come and see how God fulfills, forgives, heals, and transforms us and what our expectations are and what we are looking for. We are called to come and be with the gathered people of God so that we can be loved and challenged and transformed. We're called to come to Scripture and to see and experience the Word of God revealed to God's people. We're called to come and see, to come to the table of the Lord, hands outstretched to receive the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. But the invitation to come and see isn't just to the church. We are also called and invited out into the world to come and to see where people are broken and hungry and thirsty. To come and see the places where we can see the need for justice and healing and abundance. We are called to come and see and witness to Christ in the neighbor, the stranger, and the enemy. John's Gospel reminds us that our role as disciples begins with the invitation of come and see. And we are given then the very simple words to turn and to say to someone else, come and see the word made flesh. The Lamb of God that dwells in us, in creation, and that takes away the sin of the world. And then after we have done that, we're called to tell somebody about what we have experienced here. You don't need flowery words. You don't need to be an expert storyteller. You just need to tell somebody about how you have met Jesus. To tell somebody about your new name given in baptism, which is beloved. To tell someone how you have been fed, forgiven, and saved. And then to invite them to come and see for themselves. Amen.